Hello everyone, welcome back to Batmania. I am Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. And it's time to round out the trilogy of DC New 52 based animated Batman movies. It's Batman Bad Blood, the one Eric and I remember enjoying the most out of these. So we'll see what this ends up being like again. But I also don't remember liking it. Um, I remember liking parts the of subplot it. I liked. And then the rest of it I kind of tuned out because I don't care about their Damien and... Oh, that, that's and not. they kill off their Batman so kill off their Batman like so unceremoniously and then does that like, happen? Yeah, is that Bat in this? Batman. I don't. Okay, what I remember about this is Batwoman is cool and her backstory is well handled. That's what I. What remember. I remember. I don't remember Batwing. I mean, I remember he was in this. I don't know what he's like. I, I don't. What like, I remember is that in the cold open, Batman, one time. Batman dies. Uh -huh. Dick Grayson becomes Batman. Damien becomes Rob. Or already is Robin. It's coming back to me. And then like twenty minutes later, Bruce Wayne comes back. And we spent no time with the, the, the Dick Damien relationship. That's what I remember. So that's pointless. And I remember liking the Batwoman stuff, but it making me angry because that should have just been a movie. Yep. It shouldn't be shoved into this. And what... Yeah, or that stuff shouldn't have been shoved into her movie. Like, any way you want to slice it, right? Because, like, why would you do that if you're not going to do Return of Bruce Wayne? There's so much, at least, cinematic that gold so in fun. what that looks like, right? Yep. And you could do like the Wally -E thing, where you go twenty minutes without anybody talking. They wouldn't do that. They're, no, but not, you, they're not artistic like that. But you could. But yeah, you but could. That's what I would do. Remember who you're asking this of. Yeah, that's true. Cause like, well, and it sucks because, like, Bruce Tim left, and his team did things like that. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, not twenty minutes, but I mean, like, like you know, they they did that. Um, they did that like like pseudo riff on Death of Superman and Justice League that had uh, like like gruff bearded Superman running around on a planet by himself, which was awesome. And uh, that has like no dialogue. Anyway, all right, let's go ahead and get into this. I mean, like, that was also 20 years ago. Yeah, that's right. Th this will be a lot like watching something with me for the first time I've seen it. Um, I don't know how much of this is really going to come back to me, so I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but uh, so I don't know. Eric may have to. I remember they messed up. Shoulder the load um, on this, but I can never remember what that guy's called. But the guy who's kind of the bad guy at the end of Batman Robin. Um, the, I never finished that. The, the 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 monster guy who's who's like who's like the other clone of Batman, like Damien's brother. They mess him up really bad in this. I remember that. Well. If you want to watch it, and I suggest that you do, get out your DVD, your Blu-ray, have you want to watch it. I don't know that this is streaming anywhere, but uh, but find a way and uh, get it past all the menus, get it to timestamp zero, and get ready to press play as soon as I say now. Uh, I will admit that I am excited to finally be finished with these yeah. when we when we get this one done. Uh, but we'll uh, but hopefully I will at least enjoy the stuff that I enjoy. We have before. no more good ones. No, it's rough. It, well, you mean in in the gas in the anime in the anime line? Gas, uh, gaslight um, is 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 you know up in the air. Could Eric be, could be bad. My favorite thing about Eric is how much of like a glass half full kind of guy he is. So we have we have no more good ones as far as I can recall. Made Part of by this, this line. team, but uh, we do have the two Adam West movies still. We do have two Adam West movies, so that's nice. But we have but like a part of this. But we have line, Killing Joke. We have Killing Joke. Batman Harley. Yeah, and when we say part of this line, we don't mean continuity. Uh, DC direct animated is a line. They like count all of that as like a, there's like it's a production house that puts out two. And the Adam West are part of that, line. and they're not part of that. That's right. N nor is the the Scooby Doo thing. Yeah, yeah. And we've already talked about some others that aren't you know Lego Batman and things like that. Yeah. Well, we do still have the Lego Batman movie to look forward it's to. True. So that's and that's Batman nice Unlimited, too. obviously. So I guess pretty much just yeah, Batman Unlimited wasn't in that stuff. So I guess the only really good stuff. We have, at least animated-wise, well, there's nothing else live-action, is there? It's just animated plus BVS, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess I could have said, at the end of Dark Knight Returns, there, are, there is no more good ones of these, except for maybe Gotham by Gaslight. That's true, yeah, because we'll see how that... And people are saying that's pretty good. People are um, saying it's the, pretty good. The folks that have seen it already. Because yeah. uh, it's already out digitally, but of course we wait and, and buy it on video, so we've not seen it. And uh, the rules for the show, we won't watch it yet, because uh, mm. we'll, we'll talk about it the first time we see it. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and get into this, shall we? Uh, get ready to press, press play, and I'm going to do that right now. Here we go. Everybody, that wasn't that wasn't the now. That was not the correct <laughs> now. All right, here we go. Everybody, please press play right now. If anyone press play on that now, that's on them, because you were way back here. 
Well, they might like, not oh, be I guess actually, you just psychically... They, not, they might not be actually watching us, though. Yeah, a lot of people just listen to these that's in their true. commentary, so that makes sense. In fact, that's a statistic I would love to see. The number of people who actually watch these, as I bet, opposed I to bet just like listening eight, to I them. bet it's like 80% listen. I bet so, too. But I think that's true of most of what we do. New rival gang. Oh yeah, that's right. Because for some reason we had like a we had like a year where we tried to make the electrocution or something. Oh yeah. Because he's in Gotham, he's in Arkham Origins, and he's in this. Forgot about that. And we're starting to get obviously into stuff that's real recent now. Yeah. Already with still uh what, nine movies after this to go? And we also have Killer Moth, who had his renaissance around the first Lego Batman game. He was everywhere for like a year or two, and then we just kind of stopped using him. That joke got old. Yeah, good call. I was uh, fixing volume and stuff. Is Clayface in this scene? I don't think so. I thought I saw Clayface. There's Batwoman. I was going to... I was, I was going to say if... It, no, no, it's not Clayface. Okay. Because for a second I was like, how many movies is that in a row with Clayface? The beginning of what should be her movie. Yep. You, re you, you need to read that Greg Rocket stuff. It's so good. Yeah. It doesn't have an ending, but it's so good. I think I read an issue or two years ago. Um, I am in love with those panel layouts. That's my yeah, big thing. That's that's the first time I, I I ever saw J. H. Williams. No, that's not true. And and I and I cried foul real hard when she came back and got her own book and it didn't look like that anymore. Because I don't care who's drawing it. Batwoman comes with a with a jagged panel layout. Like it should always look like that with her. Because I just felt like that was kind of a signature look for her book. But that's how he draws everything. That's a yeah, but that of popularized him. it. Like, that's fair. Because he does that on Batman too. Like he he did does he, did, he, he does did Batman issues. He did. I a thought it was a little different. Does, does no, but does nobody else who draws her come in and use that because it's her thing? No. I thought I thought they did. Man, I don't I'm probably think so. wrong. Well, but. because there is nothing after Rucka's run until New Fifty Two. I'm in uncharted territory for me. I like this is stuff I don't know that much about. Um, and I never read her New Fifty Two stuff. Um, I. Kind of was against her being done by anyone that wasn't. Is Montoya out. in this? I think we get a brief mention of her, like at a bar or, or something. Or do they have like a scene or something? Yeah. So there's Firefly and Killer Moth, or Firebug. I assume he's Killer Moth because he kind of looks like Killer Moth. But Seems like that be would Firebug. be like a trio team you could put together in something. This animation is looking better. Yeah. This scene's not bad. And she looks great. I mean, that's pretty much just her design straight up, isn't it? Yeah. That's what she looks like. That's just, that's just Batwoman. Like, does she have all the scraps and stuff in the comics? I don't remember. I would think so, because she's a little bit more uh, militaristic. Right, because her dad's a military guy. Who I feel like is not explained at all in this movie, but is in it, but I might be wrong. I'm gonna shoot out everything I know about Batwoman in the first five minutes of this movie. Like her dad's military, uh, she's um, she's a lesbian. Like there's like three or four things I know about this character, but there like, he not, is. Not that much. There's the guy we her ruined. Name's, her name's Kate Kane. I know that. So, in the comics, this guy is like a gibbering baby man. <laughs> he has is, a Batman mask. Yes, because he's oh. Damien. Oh, that's Damien? Well, oh, oh, it's, it's, Damien's it's, that's right. Person. It's coming back. It's, he's, After Damien left, Talia grew him, and he is like the dark side of Damien, where he is just a living human weapon. Is that handled okay in the comics? Yeah, it's handled great in the oh, comics. Oh, it is, okay. Because he is the dark mirror of Damien. It's Damien seeing what he was supposed to be and what he still could become, and it's very sad, especially when you and finally... That's, and that's part of Morrison's stuff? That, yeah, that's the okay. end of his Batman run, or Batman Robin, that's the end of Batman Robin before Incorporated. I feel like I'm taking a class on Morrison Batman. And when his mask comes off, you find out that he's still like a child. Mm -hmm. Like, his... Like, they just grew his body real fast, but he's still a child. That's cool. And, and in this, is he just genericified? He's just he's just a bad guy. Oh. That's what I remember. Maybe 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 I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. Well, and they do a flash under the mask as if it 
as if immediately you're supposed to think that he's like some dark mirror for Batman or something before you know what you're even looking at. I like that. Yeah, that's where Batman dies, by the way. That explosion, Batman dies. Oh, he's dead? Oh, unfortunate. Um, that transition into the titles is pretty cool. No, it's no, pretty that, cool. No, that was pretty cool. I like that. They make it look like a bloody Rorschach ink block test. I'm going to start ending all of my statements with, I might be wrong, but I'm probably not. <laughs> that covers all your bases. Yeah. You know? It is possible, so you, it's just unlikely. Yeah, so that you don't look like really lacking in confidence, you know, like insecure about it, but you're also like wiping away any possibility of people going, man, you, you just keep, you, you're so full of yourself. Okay, yeah, so this, like you know everything. This is a little <laughs> bit uh, nice continuity because we said at the end of the last one we set up that uh, there's like a monastery that he trained at and that he tells Damon he should go train at. Yeah. It's nice that he starts there. <laughs> Where's Batman? And then we don't kind of want to like poster? skip that. Yeah. I don't, I just where's Batman with a question mark? News fifty two. Do you get it? Do you get it? Uh, it's not as bad as the drinking game you could play with season two Arrow, where everything's that number. Everything. If there's like a gangbanger that they have to go get in an apartment, you better believe it's gonna be number fifty two. And it's so ridiculous because, like, they even say decks have 52 cards in them. It's absurd. <laughs> we all know it's 54. But New 54 just doesn't, like, roll off the, you know. That's fun. He's fighting Blockbuster. That's one of his villains. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, in the uh, the Dixon stuff from the 90s, which I, I also haven't trade a little bit. I like the, the, the subtlety of... The title in the corner telling you what city you were in. Yeah, was that Bloodhaven? Like I like like I thought that was that was kind of nicely nicely done. There's another. There's it's just a, out the gate feels like it's it's got a little bit more energy and it's more deliberate in its pacing. Don't you think? Yeah. There's another Nightwing villain who uh, had his neck almost broken, but it wasn't, so his head's just backwards, and he wears like backwards clothes. I didn't know Nightwing had his own rogues gallery, but I guess he would because yeah. he has his own. Yeah, I mean, he had like 150 issues in that series. I like, should read those. I've got the first two trades. I intend to read them at some point. I know this is also turning into a drinking game. But you know what I'm going to say about that, right? Sold them on eBay at one point. Although I think you know, I say that. No, I kept those. That's but good. I don't have the whole run. I have like 20 or 30, but I have like the beginning of that run. No, it just took me a minute. No, no, no. I still have those. <laughs> I just never read them. And that's also the premiere of his uh, the blue. Bit. Yeah. Don't we do it with red sometimes? Only at the beginning of New Fifty Two. Okay. And no okay. one. And can, to this day, no one Weren't at there DC complaints about it. Oh yes. Yeah. yeah oh yeah. yes. Complaints up, up and down. And they never offered an explanation for why. Because my there was big, so much change for the sake of change in that. Well, my big thing with the red. That headset is overdoing it. Yeah. Like that. That looks like a torture device. That Alfred's wearing. Well, Look but the, he's like neurologically linked uh, to. Okay, yeah, that I guess that makes sense. But the bottom of it, just like how massive that microphone is. Anyway, I'm sorry. The thing that no one could ever explain to me about doing the red, I don't have a problem with changing it. I mean, I do because it's Nightwing has uh, maybe maybe second to the Flash, the most perfectly simple, elegant costume. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, the, we 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 fixed it. He has gone through a number of costumes. We have made the perfect Nightwing costume. You don't need to change it. Well, there. If you're just talking DC, that's right. I would put a third one in there, which is Black Costume Spider-Man. Sure, sure. That is also a perfect, simple, elegant costume. Um, as you put it. But my issue with the with the red was always like, why would you go to the only the only time it's ever been red is Batman Robin. Why would you bring that memory back? Yeah, that's a good point. It made no sense to me. And of course, and that wasn't Nightwing. And they had some fun with that when they did Rebirth, where, where uh, they were asking the, the Nightwing writer, they're like, they're like, so how different is it writing him with, with blue instead of red? Man, I wish you wore that, that suit costume. Looks great. It, it's 89, isn't it? Or real close. The, and, yeah, and, and, and I like the, um, I mean, it, it's the obvious thing to do, but this feels a little bit more artistic than they have been. Like, they're thinking a little bit with their visual cues, yeah? I think this one is um, also Demetrius. I like the bit, okay, but but the, but this is, an, it is a storyboarding thing before it's a writing thing, unless he, mm. unless he wrote it. You can never tell with that, unless you can yeah, see a script. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but the, the bit where uh, his reflection is in the Batman costume, yeah. in the, that's, that's nice. 
Okay, so I want to talk about this. I know I've told you about this before, but I don't think I've ever talked about it on camera. The Batwing thing? The Batwing thing. Yeah. So that he's just going to start as his son? Well, if, if, if you read the Bat Batwing comics, and don't worry, no one else did. Um, <laughs> I read the first issue. I was kind of bored. There is a Batwing who runs for like 15 issues, dies, and then is replaced by uh, Lucius Fox's son. Yes. In the behind-the-scenes features, in the lead-up to this film, the voice actor is talking about getting this role, and he holds up the first, like, five issues of New 52. He's like, he's like, I got my research right here. And I'm like, well, that's funny, because uh, that's not the character that's you're playing. That's not who you're playing. But of course Don't try to pretend you have geek cred. Don't do it. We'll, we'll know. Yeah, I mean, especially because that guy's probably been being interviewed after they've already done the the audio. I would imagine. I would think so. Unless they got him right as he well, got sometimes, cast. Sometimes they shoot. They shoot. They have to shoot those around that because okay. they're. But if they got him right as he got cast, recording the voices. You can't blame him for that. You have to blame somebody in the production for not for telling him because. If, if he knows that's a short run, he's not going to expect that the guy changed over sometime in the middle <laughs> of it. He's going to be very surprised by that. This is a thing that I think can be confusing for people that don't know who Batwoman is and that Batwoman wears a wig. And so her normal hair looks like that, but she wears a big, long, flowing wig. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that's explained. I, I, uh, I like it when we when we do that. Um, that that's, a, that's a Black Canary thing, too. Yeah, up until somewhere in the 2000s, or maybe it's somewhere in the late 90s. But that used to be a big thing with her as well. We bring it back in arrow. Dark hair. If memory serves, do we? I think maybe we don't. I can't remember. Both the Lance girls have long blonde hair. I guess hair. they do. There's some place else where I've seen it in, in in more recently in live action. Maybe Smallville did it. Smallville didn't do it. Did they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With the the newscaster chair or the radio chick, who just does the the grease paint. Yeah, because I mean, obviously they didn't do it in Bruce Bray. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I like that because because that's kind of like, um, because that's kind of like like glasses. I also like that. No, like it's, still, a, it's, a good, it's a good disguise. It's, well, it's better than glasses, actually. Like you, I, buy, you buy that more even. I also like that it's also still red hair. For some reason, that seems really smart to me. I don't know why. It's not, is it though? Like it makes a lot more sense if it's a totally different color. But it's it's like hiding in plain sight. Like if that's a wig, obviously the person underneath of it is not going to also have red hair. Like I, I feel like it's a, it's a what, what's the? Uh, it's the second guessing sort of thing. When I mean, it's uh, reverse, reverse psychology. psychology. Yeah, it's like reverse yeah. psychology. That's that's a nice looking bat symbol. It is. I like that signal. bat sim signal a lot. We weren't really. Uh, I have that problem too. I do yeah, that all the time. I uh, keep calling the the emblem the, a bat signal. I'm like, it's not a signal. No, no one's shining that on your chest. Is that black mask? <laughs> ah, it's a great looking costume. Yeah, yeah, it looks great. Why can't we just have this costume in all these movies? I don't know. So is this so this is Dick Grayson Batman? This is Dick Grayson Batman. Uh, so we were talking, and I wasn't paying enough attention to the actual exchange in that last scene. I don't know if they come out and make it real clear that he's military. I'm sure they do. I mean, he looks real military. He does. Yeah. That was just a question you had earlier. So, oh boy, I love that suit so much. Um, we don't do this kind of suit nearly often enough. We're like, it's not, it's not armory. It's it's re, it's real classic, but it still looks realistic enough. You know, yeah. like, why couldn't he have just been wearing that the whole time? Like, I realize that's kind of you know the Dick Grayson Batman costume, but oh, did we just make black mask? Maybe so. Or if not, that's hilarious because that's basically what Black Mask is. So I forget, is this more or less what Dick Grayson was wearing or does he have kind of multiple different bat suits? No, it's, it, that it, it's, basically, it's basically this. I thought so, but I was second guessing myself. And then when uh, when Bruce comes back, he has a costume similar to this, but it's all black. That's right. I'm excited because we're finally getting the, the yellow emblem back. Which is what it should be. Yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm probably. I, I sometimes mix things up, of course. Um, going back, thinking about the history of all this, but because um, it's been like eight years now. Um, but that is the Dark Knight costume, right? What is the, when, yes. when when he comes yes. back? That's yes. the Dark Knight costume. Yeah, I think he designed it. I think they said David Finch designed that. Costume. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No. That cover's gorgeous. It's one of my. It's one of my favorites from that era. 
Well, why don't you try it, 12-year-old kid? Why don't you do the Batman voice? I'm vengeance! I'm the knight! I don't want to... Like, I don't want to just do the, it's, it's not good because it's different, but it's not good because it's different. He should not have been robbed until this point. No, I agree. The whole point is... But that's not because it's different. That's because that... It, it, it just it just makes more sense, and he became Robin for no good reason in the first place. You know what looks even worse in CGI? Motorcycles. That's a problem with what we did in that first movie before it's anything. Yeah. And no, then it's again, not that's not because fault. it's different. No, I know that's not what you're saying, but my point is, it's not an issue now, it's an ongoing issue. Yes. He's a little better here. Who? The guy voicing Batman who we don't care for. That's he's, Nightwing. He's, oh, that is Nightwing. I keep doing that. Sorry. Yeah, of course. Okay, well, he should have been voicing Batman the whole time. Um, I don't know who that is. There is a thing in I'm sorry, the... I know that. I'm like I'm trying to keep all this stuff straight because it's been so long since I've thought about this era and I haven't read through enough of Morrison. Well, and it makes a certain amount of sense to introduce her here. You take over, I'm just gonna watch this movie. Okay. Uh, it makes a certain amount of sense to introduce her here Let me take because notes. uh when we do uh Batman Reborn, which is the branding of when Batman Robin starts when Dick Grayson takes over. Oh yeah. The branding is Batman Reborn. She takes over because that's under comics. that first is that is that in is that written on the first issue? Yeah, because I because I because I think it's under. I think that's with, what the first standing, arc is called. With them standing next to the car. Yes, yes. That classic cover now. Yes, yes. Or what I think of is yeah. Kind of a classic no, 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 cover. it's really classic cover with yellow. It was. I don't know if you know the thing about that cover, but Morrison intentionally had every rule that you weren't supposed to do on a comic book cover. Like these are the things you don't do because they won't sell, and like it was like you White can't have yellow. No, 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 you can't have yellow. So it just makes the entire background yellow, and like oh, is it yellow in the background? Yeah, I, I don't have it. Uh, Different printings change the color, That's but the initial. Funny. Uh, but yeah, no, he just did everything you weren't supposed to do in, on the cover. But so, Gruka, and that was like uh, the Gruka. biggest. That was like the biggest uh, comic that year. Yeah, uh, Greg Rucka's uh, run on 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 Batwoman. Uh, he he creates her new in in the original Fifty Two series, but uh, it had been a couple of years and it kept getting stalled for some reason. The series never actually happened. It was supposed to be its own book, and then it was supposed to be this, and it was supposed to be that. Eventually, he takes over Detective Comics, um, and it's in this Batman Reborn era. So she is getting her first ongoing, or she's getting her first, you know, comics at the same time that all this is happening. I remember not liking this, if I'm remembering this right, as I'm looking at this dialogue and not really hearing a lot of it. Um, is, isn't it... No, he's still bad. Isn't it that he doesn't... Yeah, he's still bad. Isn't it that Dick doesn't really want to put the bat suit on... In the and comments? I remember him. Be, no, in the, and I oh. remember him being kind of whiny about it in this. I don't know if I'm right about that. I don't remember. Maybe. I think he's just real on. But uh, it's not like that in the comics, is it? No. Well, a little, but not not bad. But isn't it probably more like? I, I, again, like I can't speak to it because I haven't read enough of it. But I remember what I read of it being more of like, uh, I'm not totally sure if I can fill the shoes. Yeah. Or like, yeah, it's like that. And also, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if, if I can keep Damien under control. Yeah, exactly. And anyone who puts on the bat suit should have the fear that they can't fill those shoes because we have that "I'm Batman" thing, and like there's 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 so much stuff that uh, not only does it feel like only Bruce Wayne can do, but Bruce likes having the status quo and the and and the um, reputation of. No one can do these things but me. Mm -hmm. And so he creates that himself. And then there's this there's this vacuum that's left if he if, if if he leaves, which is one of the interesting paradoxes with Batman, where he he uh like is there kind of to set an example that people could follow after he's gone, but he also operates as if he'll always be there. Uh, the heretic is what that guy's name is. So I couldn't think of that big bulky guy. That's right. Him. That's right. Um, yeah, I remember that name because I remember you complaining about it when this came out. Also, he's hanging out with with Onyx, which is really interesting because she's an early two thousands part of Batman's 
uh, supporting cast. Okay. Uh, there's a whole supporting cast that no one remembers from from the early 2000s of Batman. Interesting. Uh, there's Onyx and there's I can never I I can never remember the name. <laughs> but there's other people. You don't remember either. You just remember that they were there. At one They're point. in War Games. I've got the trades. And and, and if you read those out of context, you're just like, who are these people? Why is Batman trusting That's them? That's that thing I looked at and said I want to read, and you were like, yeah. well, have at it. Yeah. No. No. We're gonna do, we're gonna do War Games at some point because Cap wants to read it. Yeah, you uh, said it was really bad. It's not good. Um. But it might be fun, Dad. Like, it might be fun to, to tear apart. And everyone hates it, so no one's going to get angry if we tear apart war games. It's got the Wayne logo from Batman Begins. Yeah. Hey, look, it's, it's got the Lucius Fox from Batman Begins. <laughs> well, not in the hair, exactly. I mean, it looks... I wonder what that was. <laughs> Yeah, because you can see it from the back. This feels even more tacked on than, than the Batwoman stuff. Why is this even in this movie? Like, we are just wasting screen time. Because they're just randomly like, let's pull things in from wars. Why is this bad blood? Why is it not Batman Incorporated? And I know I made this this case with the last one. I think it was the last one that I, that I mentioned this, where I was like, why don't you just um, do Batman and Son and then... Return of Bruce Return Wayne. Return of Bruce Wayne and the Batman Incorporated. But even with the two movies we had already, wouldn't this make more sense as Batman Incorporated? You're trying to bring in other Bat-ish characters, and he would make sense as, a, as the villain for their Batman Incorporated. Sure. Potentially, yeah. Sure. And that would be an okay way to truncate some of the Morrison stuff. Yeah. Well, I know you're not going to like it unless they do it exactly straight, which would require... I don't need it exactly straight. Show. I need it to seem like they read the issue. Okay, all right, fair enough. Because I get the impression that no one working on these films... And and why would G J.M. DiMatteis read the Morrison Batman stuff? Like, he was probably handed a synopsis of what they wanted and then wrote a script. He probably has no idea that this is based on anything. Well, the problem is it doesn't even feel like it really has, like, the spirit and the ideas of those stories. Yeah, it's not really about what those were about as much. No, it really feels like something read right Wikipedia. There's a little bit of lip service to what that that Damien stuff was. You know, in, in like, you know, the nature versus nurture question and, and stuff like that. I know that... Like, but it's real surface. I think that's kind of like a typical, like, tough guy villain line, but I kind of like that. Your son becomes a memory. That feels generic, but I don't know. I, I kind of like it. Your precious armory. <laughs> would you get off the the precious? Or would you just make sense in this? Would you just get it's off? Because a Batman that's known for all his gadgets. The precious and all armory. His, and that's all of his stuff. Just start. Just stop it with the precious. Ah! Who's the walrus guy? Uh, cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Also, why does that guy only have a lens in one of his glasses? <laughs> you mean one of the sides of his glasses? Yeah, yeah. It's like it, it's like it's. Is that supposed to be like a real badass kind of thing? Like, ooh, look at me! I only need to see well in one side. Well, is it that he has something special on the lens, and the other one actually has a lens in it? But maybe, it sort of looks but like it, it looks doesn't? like he has sunglasses where he popped the lens out of one side. That feels like a thing you could have made. A trend, like a fashion trend, in the future of Back to the Future Two. Okay, you know, like having your pockets on the outside, like people walk around with glasses that have one lens out. Okay, so, so, so two things about the scene. One, um, ooh, that looks great. Is Lucius going to be saved because of the Batwing suit? Because that would be dumb. No, this this looks. Can good. we just all uh, agree that was amazing? But two, the heretics line. I don't say that much about these, okay? Like, that was that was beautiful. Is dumb and doesn't make sense. What does he say? There are no secrets left in this world, except for the ones we take to our grave. Which means there are still secrets in this world. He says it as he, as he stabs Lucius, but I'm not sure what it means. What? Boy, I can't... I don't even know how to unpack that. Right? There's no secrets... I feel like I'm doing a crossword puzzle trying to figure that out. <laughs> there, <laughs> there's no secrets... There's no secrets, except for the ones we take. There's no our, secrets in this world anymore. And there's any more, like something changed. Yeah, like all of a sudden, all the secrets are except for the ones that we die with. But I that would suggest that we have secrets. Right. Well, like if you stayed <laughs> alive, someone would figure it out. But if you, it's <sighs> like there are people who know things. <laughs> That you don't know. 
But those don't count as secrets until you're dead? What if... I'm gonna go to bed tonight, and I'm gonna wake up in the middle of the night, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna realize how profound that line is, right? It, like, is it that dumb, or are we not thinking about it right? No. Well, he he says it as he stabs there Lucius. No and so I, that way, Wolverine. He says that he stabs Lucius, so it's obviously like you're gonna die, and like whatever you know dies with you. But he says we. He says except for what like we real, take to our grave, like it's right, a grand. So you think proverbial? Uh, yeah, like the the royal we. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that was some of the worst exposition and dialogue I've seen in a long time. Okay, so I have a question about Batman. Um, just in your personal take on Batman. Have you ever, sorry, have you ever, like, gone to bed in, like, a really bright purple room? Like, it seems like that would be really distracting. I'm sorry, what? Um, okay, so th that water looked great. That water continues to look great. Um, just in they your, really stepped up the animation in this In your part. personal view of Batman. Yes. Does Batman have sex with his floozies? Or does he always find a way to get out of it? Is your Batman actually a playboy or does he pretend in to be? In my world, he is not. Mine as well. Yeah. If for no other reason than just Batman cannot risk diseases. But I think... Grant, excuse me, I think Frank Miller's Batman does do that. Do you? Yeah. I don't think he does. I think he's too committed to, to the war. Well, maybe not once he's, like, old and, like, you know, in the future, but... Okay, but can we agree that, like... All-Star Batman, All totally, Batman does. totally does. No, All-Star Batman completely does. Yeah. Well, and as we said before, he can say all day long that that's all continuity. So those are two entirely different characters. Well, in year one, Batman does it. No, he doesn't. That's true. I, I guess when I said that, I'm thinking <laughs> all star crazy Miller. Batman. Well, we know he does because because he 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 and uh, Black Canary have sex on a pier. Oh, in costume. yeah. I could see an argument for he can't keep up the image unless he does occasionally. But I would love to see. But but if if you had that version, I would want to see him be like as responsible as he can about it, or, or treat it as like a necessary evil, or like something. There's a story somewhere. I want to say it's Paul Dini's story, but I might be wrong. There's a story somewhere where it's all of these girls that Bruce Wayne has been with, um, and they all think they're the only one he didn't sleep with. Oh, that's that's really interesting. And then like they see, have I a like conversation, a and they're like, you said "Wait, he did that? I think so." That I, sounds I don't, like a don't idea. Yeah, but yeah, and then like they're all having a conversation, like, "Wait, he didn't sleep with you either." Oh, he passed out. With, you know, you know, when you were with him too, like. That was, that and was they're all like an, embarrassed about because they think they're the only one. Sorry, that was kind of an interesting choice where we we have a we have a, 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 a like slight close up on that uh, that computer screen, mm -hmm. and then we back up as uh, the heretic comes into the shot because he's really big. I think just to try to accentuate, look how big he is, or because we didn't storyboard it right and we had to like <laughs> back up because he takes up too much space. I'm not sure. Um, and so we've already concluded the mystery of where Batman is. So for the rest of this film, while the characters are trying to figure out where he is, there is no tension or suspense for us. I hate that. I hate that guy. And you need to have a really good reason in most things, unless it's a Saturday morning cartoon, to cut to the villains anyway. Because like this is a thing I, I wrestle with a lot, where it's like, how much more do I want to know about what's going on than the protagonist that I'm supposed to feel for and empathize with? Mm-hmm. Well, and sometimes it's, I'm not saying it's uh, never a good idea, but it's usually best when it's um, when, when when the villain almost has their own character arc, where it's almost like like a, like like paralleling stories. Where yeah, it's an antagonist, but on their side, they're the protagonist of their own story. Or it has to move the plot forward. Like this is not information we'd or, be able to communicate to you we wouldn't understand without it. cutting to. That's, that's exactly yes. right. But that can be like real dicey in then watching, as you said, our our main character catching up to what we know already. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that could be really tough, and I think a lot of people don't even think about it. They just go, well, cut into the villains. What you do in a comic book thing? Well, well, the, th the scene that immediately jumps to my head when you brought that up is um, the scene in Winter Soldier, where, where it's Pierce at his, uh, at his home, and... Yes. I don't... Like, I think that's a needed scene. Like, I it don't is. think you can cut that. Um, 
But yeah, like you can cut to the villains if they're just like maniacal laughing. <laughs> maniacal laugh. And then we'll hold the wall. Mani- there she is. Maniacal laugh. Yeah, yeah, you remembered that right. She is at a bar. I don't know what that means. Right off. Uh, like it's just her entire life is. Oh, oh, I get that. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Sorry, I immediately had like a. You're not Catwoman. You don't have like nine lives. Like it, t- it took me a minute. Um, I'm really enjoying actually a lot of things about this visually, which I'm surprised by. Uh, but I'm not. Uh, keeping up with the story super well because I don't remember it very well, and we're making a commentary. <laughs> um, so yeah, this feels real blind to me. when the message just was, was just ellipses? <laughs> ellipses. Rooftop access. Um, I like how nonchalant they are about her sexuality. I yeah. think that's handled really, really well. I agree completely. Um, one other thing that's going to be interesting is what happens to Batwoman moving forward. Yeah. Because her origin story is deeply rooted in Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Oh. And that's not going to date well. Because like, in 30 years, that, that yeah. cannot be her origin. We're going to have or to come up with a new We've one. gotten rid of that, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I never thought of that. Yeah, it's gonna be like Dick Grayson with the circus. You just can't do it anymore. Yeah, but even more so. Like circus, you can get away with in like a heightened, like more traditional, classical, like world. That's that's rooted in, a in way, present day politics. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it starts in present day. Like I think the last sure. hotel is instituted by Clinton, isn't it? I don't remember. I I, I think so. Um, yeah. So like it's These very rooted in a very specific, a very often. specific yeah. period of time. Um, Which is one of those real kind of dicey things again Where, you know, uh, at the time It's kind of okay that it that it's so timely But then, if you're stuck with it in a continuity That continues to move forward well, it's also one of those... like that was, like, last Wednesday As opposed to 20 years ago When we did, or 10 years ago when we did it yeah. last Well, and I'm sure, I'm sure when you make that It feels like, I want this to change But it feels like it's never going to change So like, sure. when you're writing that origin It doesn't feel like, well, and tomorrow we're going to change this And it was like Five years later, I don't. I and if that's something you care change. about, then that's a good problem to have. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly. <laughs> I don't know. That guy in the Jonah Hex episode of the Animated Series seemed to turn out just fine. I've never heard, and I like, like I'm sure this is the outfit we had before, or maybe it's not. I don't remember. But like, I wasn't paying that much attention to his to his voice. I've never heard an animated. Alfred that sounds more patterned off of Michael Goff than anyone. Yeah, that's Michael Goff. Yeah. I mean, it's not Michael Goff. Yeah. Michael that's Goff what it sounds away. like. Yeah, but but he's he's trying to sound like Michael Goff. It, it kind of stood out to me too, and I don't remember that in the first. Two. I like it. Yeah, I can't believe the thing I said earlier. Where I was like, why why does he sound so much better? Oh, it's Dick Grayson. <laughs> um, his voice is pretty good. His from voice what is pretty good, to, and, and I like her too. I mean, I know I said that I liked her, like her, her like background and how they handled her in this movie. I'm talking about Batwoman, yeah. but uh, but I think the voice is pretty good too. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm sure she's somebody. I'm sure we'll get to the credits. And it's a you know geek celebrity guest star kind of a thing. This is one of the okay Vaseline on the lens. Yep. I can't I can't look at that. At um, least it's a flashback. Right, but We're if they do it for a stylist, but if choice. they do it any place other than this. Then that's annoying, but they mm-hmm. haven't they haven't done it yet. I mean, this you're right. This works okay for a flashback. Yep. No, actually, that's a good choice. You've got like the the slight haze, but it's like it's not like rose tinted glasses flashback. Mm-hmm. It's not like she's not remembering this fondly. It's not nostalgic. That was a good transition. Th- this is one of those um, situations where I was going to say this during that fight. Where I'm actually not 100% sure that Batman was needed there. She actually might have won that. Okay. But here's what I here's here's what I like about this and what she just said. Yeah. <clears throat> I was not paying attention. <laughs> um, so, Batman's thing is, like, he's never... No one's ever... What happened to his parents will never happen to anyone else ever again. That's his... That's his... Hers is... What happened to me will never happen to anyone else. Like, no yeah. one should need Batman. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting. Yeah, sure. Um, 
And it's a very different motivation. No, a more modern motivation. No, absolutely, because that would inherently make her about uh, other people being uh, totally independent and her helping to facilitate that, as opposed to Batman, who kind of makes himself responsible for everyone's well-being. Mm-hmm. Even if, like, he would like everyone to step up and act more like him, when they start to do that, he doesn't react well. Mm -hmm. And again, that's the kind of great paradox about Batman. Batwoman's not a character I, I, again, I know real well and have thought a great deal about, so this is not a character that I'm really prepared to, like, psychoanalyze or anything. It's interesting, uh, when Batman does show up in her book, which is pretty early on, um, it is when Dick is running around, and so okay. technically, I think it is supposed to be Dick, but it's kind of, I think, written and drawn ambiguous. So it could be any Batman. That's cool. That's cool. Giving her advice because he's not super anti her the way that uh, this movie kind of seems like he is in the the video footage we saw of him. <clears throat> Why are you here? You're <laughs> wasting the screen time. We get it. You're Tony Stark. But not as smart as Tony Stark. <laughs> You're Rhodey. <laughs> You're Rhodey Stark. Oh, this is just the Iron Man suit up sequence. Like, look at that. Like, even the, the arm things. Like, that's. Yeah, and. And we're doing heavy metal music. Heavy metal music. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. We were trying to tell you that he is Bat Iron Man. Except, but, you, know, you know what's really silly? He couldn't put his own <clears> gloves on. They're just gloves. They're not like Iron Man gloves. They're just gloves. And it's not as cool because he didn't make it. Yeah, that's fair. Although I want to say... He's got an arc reactor. This, is bat yep, yep. But I want to say this looks a little bit better than it did in the comics. I, I remember thinking the, the costume in the comics looked really bad. But I haven't seen it in however long it's been since the beginning of 52. I like that their dick uh, smiles in the bat suit. Yeah. Because that's always weird and unnerving in a world where you're used to Batman not smiling. I, and that's also a thing in the Batman and some stuff. Or uh, Batman Robin stuff. Is he's a smiling Batman. Because he's Dick Grayson. He's a smiley guy. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing I really like in Young Justice, that um, whenever Robin is using the shadows, he uh, he laughs like the shadow to freak yeah, people out. I yeah. love that. But it, it, And laugh at me if you want to. It took me... Um, I've been watching the Young Justice. I, I promise I won't spend this whole time talking about that. But um, it took me a few episodes to realize he was Dick and not Tim. Oh. Like, I didn't get that right away. No, that's fair. Children I'm not used cruel. to us ever doing that. <laughs> Children can be cruel. And you will also... You, uh, yep. Just a just regular clone. Yeah, see, it, it doesn't play like a, a big surprise, like what the reveal like it should. It's just a plot point. Yeah. We had issues with uh, with the first movie for that kind of thing. This is the first time in this that, 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 that that's irritating. We also but, haven't built a mystery around it. No. In the way that, like, well, for that's years true. in the comics, there was a big question of, is he actually Batman's son? Yeah. <clears throat> Here we knew from the beginning, right? Yeah, and they, Batman like, wasn't immediately. remotely surprised about it. He just shows up, and Batman's like, all right, I guess i got to deal with this now. I remember that night. It was a rough night. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I thought you meant the night we had to watch it, where you're like, no, oh, no. we had flashbacks <laughs> to us having to do that commentary. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. It's just the way you spell it out. I don't know. You're 12, so you must be dumb. There and in here. That's Damien. That's what Damien would do. I like using Mad Hatter for this, kind of. Okay, like I like the idea of using Mad Hatter because they're going to do like brain stuff and that, make, that, that tracks with yeah. them, right? Yeah, sure. Why would Talia come to him? Like, she's got the whole world at her disposal. Unless he's the only person that's invented what she's using. <clears throat> Suffer like G did? <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this the theme of the movie? Is this a question? Actually, it would be if they did return Bruce Wayne. Where he's hopping through time. 
They yeah. can't remember each time. Well, he's a man without memories. Well, he's always Batman, even though he can't remember. That's rec- a great point. Yeah, yeah, sure. Nope, we'd be doing something with that. Nope, don't buy it. Even on your knees, that's not. you would not be that low. You're a giant. Yeah, you would still be, like, eye level with her. He'd have to crouch way down. Yeah, yeah, he's also doing, like, this. <laughs> he's folding himself over. No, you're right. That's that's what's kind of uh, infuriating about some of these is they'll throw out that one question or that one thematic idea that's like really fascinating, but it's just introduced and not explored. You know, so like I love to explore that idea. Mm-hmm. You know, because yeah, he's not a man. He's 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 just a child in a man's body, and he hasn't had any life experiences. So you know. It's that question of hey, are are we just the sum of our experiences, um, or if or, or are we more than that simply by virtue of being human and not an animal or something? You know, you know, you know, like there's stuff to explore there. This is a question I keep meaning to bring up because it's in like every Batman movie. Guns bad, missiles fine. Missiles are all right. Yep, bombs are okay. Yeah, bombs are okay. But I get the it's idea. The thing that I want to talk. I, I I want these these things sometimes to talk more about. But I actually like that idea a lot. I get because it's 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 just the psychology of it is that the symbol the thing. of the gun. Exactly. Yeah. But what's weird about the bombs and the missiles? It's is, not just artillery, right? It's it's if I shoot a man at point blank range, I become the people I'm trying to But he's into killing, and so the missiles, and, like, I I guess most of the time he Batman's real lucky. specific about he just gets not, not killing people with those. Like, he's only used them to get rid of, like, stuff in his way and whatnot, but I wouldn't risk a missile. We keep talking about our personal Batman versus other Batmans. Yeah. I think my, I think my personal Batman... Um, is it's, it's it's funny to talk about it like that because uh, because I, I can't think of like one story that perfectly encapsulates exactly my personal Batman. You know, mm-hmm. we talk about that a lot. Yeah. Um, but I guess uh, the way I see Batman, uh, it's this total like psychological hang up, uh, almost to the point of being like uh, psychosis, mm-hmm. where he would not lose his mind if he even was. He forced to kill someone for the greater good as long as it wasn't with a handgun. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of see him like that. You know, he doesn't lose it if he likes to, if, if he like has to let the bad guy go from a high place or something. You know, and like, and like you could argue, well, he didn't kill him. He tried to save him. He couldn't do anything about it. But like, if he uses a bomb or a missile and there's like, someone that gets in the way and dies or something, like he wasn't intending to kill them, that would be different than if he fired a gun and someone jumped in the way. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I see Batman. And remember, it's it's about him before it's about anyone else. He doesn't have a problem with Jim Gordon using a gun. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he's a police officer, and that's what they do. Yeah. And I also like that is is an argument of part of why Batman won't, why Bruce Wayne wouldn't be a police officer. It's not just yeah. because of the line uh, that he has to be able to cross farther than the police do in order to, to do his job, or he's a necessary evil. It's the uh, it's the fact that he would be forced to carry a gun. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of like that idea that like he's afraid he would cross the line if he goes with the people who never cross it. Well, it's also why in the original Earth 2 it makes sense that Dick Grayson can become a cop. I think Dick Grayson becomes a cop in the Nightwing comics, too. Dick Grayson can be a cop, because his parents weren't killed with a gun. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Really? He would never use acid. He would absolutely never use acid, specifically on rope. He would never (laughs) do that. That's real specific. I I, I just feel like that wouldn't come up a lot. I want... I actually think it could with the Batman thing. Like... I want there to be a yeah. scene where, where, where Batman's like, Drop I, need, I, acid. I yeah, yeah I, I, I need you to use this like uh, sulfuric acid to like burn these ropes. He's like, I can't. I can't, I can't. I can't do that. That's the one thing. I vowed to my parents I would never burn ropes with acid. I'll do anything for Batman, but I won't do that. Or like he just he just gets flashbacks and loses it if he ever has to like 
even just cut a rope? Or is this, there's, a, there's a rope, and he's like, I can't, I can't handle this. See, rope. Dick is totally lost in this movie. He has no art here. Yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't. He almost doesn't need to be here. Could have just been Damien running around, and these other Bat characters showing up. Yeah, and so then the question is, like, did we need to pseudo kill Batman off at the beginning? I don't know. Couldn't it have still just been Bruce Wayne, and we did all the stuff that's actually interesting in this? Or that the movie is, is focused on? Like, the only things that really matter that have a real arc in this are Batwoman and Damian Wayne. Like, that's it. Mm -hmm. And you could, you can cut, you could have cut Batwing and given all that screen time to Dick Grayson. These other, have him deal with the mantle and stuff. And, and this always drives me. And Damian. These other things are just here for the sake of representation of stuff in comics that they really want to see visualized. That's yep. it, right? Yep. So it's like, uh, well, we wanted to do Batwing because we wanted to represent stuff in the Batman Incorporated era, I guess. Uh, or we wanted to do like another sidekick type character. Because like, what is he doing? What? This is this is eighty nine, isn't skills. it? <laughs> That's eighty nine, yep. right? That's or, the uh, or Indiana Jones. Okay, but eighty nine probably ripped that off. Indiana Jones to some degree. I never thought of that. But but like that's. But like we're in a real old uh, building, and like it, it's it's like it's like the guy who gets hit with the uh, with the bell at the end of eighty nine. Oh. That guy? Yeah. Oh, I was thinking the guy in the alley that does that. Well, that's there too, but um, but remember, there's there's the guy that's about to come after him. He's like, ah, and then the bell just drops on him. Oh no, I, th I think that's way more Indiana Jones. Where Indiana Jones is the guy with the is it, is it a whip? It's swords. He, he's also got swords, and Indiana Jones just shoots him. Yeah. No, or I know, also I know Ninja Turtles with the because what I immediately thought when he started doing his like break dancing martial arts. Wait, but arts, did Batman cause it? No, it just fell on him. That's my so, point. So, I guess so it's more, not as much yeah, like what you're talking yeah. about, because Indiana Jones pulls out the gun. That's what I'm talking about. Because the thing like that in 89, Batman, Batman just hits him in the face. He's just like, and you're done. But I also thought of the scene with Ninja Turtles, with the, with the nunchucks. Yes. The keep practicing scene. <laughs> keep practicing. <laughs> when they're in the middle of a fire. No, the fire hasn't that, started yet. That's, that's that, when they first storm in. Oh, okay, okay, that's right. That guy sounds like he's trying so hard and I feel so bad. He's like, hey! <laughs> it's like Michael. Oh, now they're all dead! <laughs> it's like Michelangelo's personal uh, devil went down to Georgia. <laughs> Saved um Okay, so we did all that build up for the sake of a plot device. So yep. he becomes a Deus Ex Machina, basically. Yep. And also kind of. And also, I don't buy that those two couldn't have survived that fall. Like, both of those guys would just latch onto that hell no, immediately, they, no, they, just out of sheer reflex. Yeah, and and no one was worried about them, of course. That's a and part of that's because of like where it happens in the movie, you know. You, mm. you know that, that that's your in the formula in your in your climax. That's the standard. Oh okay. man, some like 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 they survived somehow. But that as a dilemma is your standard Saturday morning cut to commercial kind of dilemma. That Afro voice is fascinating to me. Yeah. I, we, we can look this up, but I don't. I, I still don't know if that's the same voice in the first two movies. I don't know either. It didn't stand out to me in the first two movies. That necklace is a weird choice for, for the Grace. I think it so feels kinda eighties. I also don't buy that anyone that, that that was raised by Batman would wear any kind of jewelry. Because you would always be thinking about like tactics and you don't want anything that can be grabbed or pulled or Yeah, that's true. You know, unless you were gonna use it yourself to do something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's not over. No. Nope. I forgot. Yeah, I, I call that a climax. Like, I, I don't even know how far in we are. It did feel like the end, didn't it? Yeah. Um, oh. 22 minutes Okay, left. see, remember, like, we're not doing... We News immediately found out Bruce Wayne was alive. And, like, we spend no time with Dick Grayson's Batman. No. 
No, that that is the dictionary definition of just representing something in comics that you wanted to see. There was no point of that. Yeah. Like, the Superman death in Superman Doomsday is better than that. Like... Okay, those those are fighting words. I don't I don't know if that's I don't know if that's true. It at least felt like it, it's at least important to that story that you take him off the map for a while. That's yeah. that that's it. He just doesn't want people to steal his bat brand. Yeah. Also, no, we should have remembered. There's more with her. You're gonna be fine. Ten thousand dollars. <laughs> for I uh, for for. For using bad copyright infringement? Yeah. For stealing intellectual property? That's the thing he could do once Batman Incorporated hit. Absolutely. He, he could, could sue any bat imposters. Sure. Which would be really funny because it would be legally Bruce Wayne suing. Yep. Now, you know how I feel about that whole thing. Like, Batman Incorporated has never made any sense to me. And I, I never got that. I always felt like Morrison was better than that. I like how he deals with it. I don't like how it starts, though. Just, just that, that, that press conference is preposterous to me. That people don't immediately go, okay, he must be Bruce Wayne. And, and, and then the problem is, even to this day, because that's all still canon, anybody, it, it, ever, it ever comes out in the public that he's Batman, no one's surprised at that point. You know, there's no, there's no mystery in it. There, there's, there's no, uh, yeah, it just, it, it just, it just wouldn't, it just wouldn't blow anybody's minds. Mm -hmm. I guess you can call it like a hiding in plain sight thing, I guess. I don't know. Well, that's kind of what it is. And he goes online and actually, like, posts as different people adding, like, conspiracy theories. Like, he try Like, the idea of Bruce Wayne being Batman, uh, he, I just he, he called... spins and kind of plays as, like, a crazy conspiracy theory. I thought theory. we called way too much attention to it. Part of this is is a problem with the escalation of Batman throughout the decades. Yeah. He starts as just like a wealthy man about town. Now he has to be the richest person in the DC that's universe. A, that's a really great point, yeah. Well, we do this a lot with popular characters, both good guys and bad guys, right? We're like, Darth Vader has to be the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. When he just basically started as a thug that he'd use the force, and yeah, yeah, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. This guy must be someone, right? The guy with the glasses. I don't know. He's supposed to be someone and we just weren't paying attention, didn't... Or maybe somebody I've never heard of. It's the DC Tinker. I just don't know. What are they drinking? What, what is that purple stuff? Like, what is it? I can't think of any drink color that, that's not, like, an alien thing in, like, Star Trek or something. Okay, I can't think of that either. I actually don't know it's if a purple blood. drink in Star Trek. <laughs> it's, it's Star Trek saying Klingon blood. Yeah, because Colonel Worf would go to TNG, would time travel to TNG era, drink Klingon blood wine, and go, this is not Klingon blood. Was Matt out of the secret villain this whole movie? That's kind of cool. <laughs> Matt Hatton never gets any Well, I don't know if he had his own plan, did he? Or is he still just working I'm for Talia? I'm not sure. Because doing... they stopped Talia and, and the heretic. Well, Talia killed the heretic. I don't know right. why he was in this movie. <clears throat> yeah, it's weird that you had more movie after that, which is, I guess, why I forgot we had more movie after that. This is, like, three movies. Yep. You know what, though? If we said incremental progress, this whole thing is still head and shoulders above the first two, I think. No, I agree. That that looked that look like, a, like a Mario tube in the background. Like, you could go into the Mushroom Kingdom... Oh, just the way it was shot. Like, well, I was like, so excited when I thought it was over. I was like, wow, I'm <laughs> really fast. <laughs> now we can move on top of things. Yeah, oh, so just We'll bring this up later on in Mania, and you'll be like, I remember that night. I remember when this hour and 15-minute movie felt like a two-hour movie. Get out of here, Batwing. No one wants you. <laughs> I'm sure there's fun names hidden in there. Uh, something McDowell... Saw an Alicia something. <laughs> yeah. Harley Quinn. Daniel. We gotta we gotta read backwards. Oh man, my favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite Batman character, Daniel. I'm sure there's a Daniel someone in Batman. 
Daniel Wayne, Batman's son. <laughs> the one this movie's about. Batman's stepson. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean you've had a son in boarding school all this time <laughs> named Daniel? Oh, he's brainwashed. Oh, oh, it was all ruse, wasn't it? That's what it was. They wanted him to be saved, to be rescued, because he's mind controlled. Yeah, I couldn't remember if there was some kind of, like, uh, big twist in this or something. Well, we knew he was, like, not himself when he came back, but I couldn't, I didn't remember that it was all part of the plan. Yeah. The plan. I feel like this is a thing that works better in comics than it does in film. Because the idea of, like, the fake ending, where you're like, you think the story's done, but it's still going, doesn't work when you have a time stamp. Yeah. Um, and, and really doesn't work when you're, you're like, thank well, God I mean, it's almost over. You're not necessarily looking at the time stamp. Like, I don't think most people, you know, watch these things on their computers and are looking at a time stamp. But you're aware of the passage of time, whereas if you're reading month to month, and it feels like the story's over, and the next issue, or at the end of the issue, you're like... Oh, because yeah, you don't actually know how long the story is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, especially if you're reading in singles. It's different yeah. in trades because you're like, well, I've still got three chapters left. Yeah, yeah. But you can get to the end of a trade and not necessarily know if the story continues. Like, yeah, it's like, yeah, like, that could yeah. happen. You know, the, especially the, if it's new. Yeah, yeah. That could end. That could be the end of a trade, and then when you get to the next trade, you're there's like, oh man. This, there's also the self-pacing thing we're always talking about. Yeah. But no, this just seems like a story structure that works a little bit better in, in monthly comics than it does in a film. More effectively to to the audience and duping the audience, and at the very least, you know, thing that's not direct to video that always has the same length. Like you can do this in the theater. Yeah, easily. yeah, because you don't know how long it is theoretically. I mean, people complain about false endings all the time. Well, if they know exactly what the timestamp is, why would they complain about that? Yeah. They'd be like, "Well, I know we have twenty five minutes left." Well, I, I, you're I not supposed to be looking at your watch uh, while you're watching a movie in the movie theater. I think people complain about false endings because they feel tedious. Well, that's why too, but I but I do think that a lot of the time when people say that they actually thought the movie was over. Well, and I think most of the time when we complain about false endings in that kind of a thing, it's like I mean, and I was that ready for Knight. the movie to be over. We, we thought that with with the with the latest Star Wars movie. I mean, like 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 yeah, but I don't complain about the false ending in, in Dark Knight. No, I know that, but my point is, I don't think people are like looking at their watches like like academically going, okay, I know there's 20 more minutes, but this ending, no, this but feels think, like an ending. I think the issue is like with with the Last Jedi is. And I was ready for this movie to be. Well, over. that's fair, yeah. Um, which is what I'm having with this kind of, where I'm like, oh yeah, no, that was real, that was real fast, that wasn't so bad. Oh, it's still go. But that was a risk in Dark Knight for anybody that wasn't as taken with it as we were. Absolutely, but you know? everyone and most people, people are, and also there's the fact that that people are kind of used to the three act structure. Mm -hmm. Um, and. I mean, so, I mean, something I'll give like, Last Jedi is it's really unpredictable as far as that pacing goes. I mean, as far as that structure goes, right? Because um, it's not, uh, you know, you know, your your real traditional three act structure. Um, exactly. I mean, you can break it down. No, it's like a nineteen like, act structure. Yeah. No. No. It is. It is. Uh, and even some folks that like it, I've heard say, no, it's like a whole trilogy in one movie. But like um, with Dark Knight, I think some people were put off by the fact that it was. Um, not the not the rigid formula that they're kind of used to mm. in, in a in a genre movie like this. Oh, now it's going down, Eric. This would mean something if we spent time with Dick Grayson as Batman and he was dealing with like overcoming like that he's not as good as Batman. He could never be as good as Batman. Now he's facing that in a literal physical form. If you if you talked in that sarcastic robot voice like an entire commentary, I would love to I would love to see the the stats on how many people we lost throughout it. Like, <laughs> you're like, and then here comes Batman, and this is the part that means nothing because of the things earlier that were not set up. And like you're just the entire time you talk like that, like Nightwing is pulling out I his dick. That that would have been the thing that lost subscribers. Yeah, yeah, that would have been. Uh, that might have been the end of your tenure on the Geek Evolution. Uh, um, maybe so. Maybe so. Hey, Eric, man, I, I hope you're ready to be on the Batman channel with other things. <laughs> hope you're ready to co-host this that, Batman channel. That is, that is with Eric dropping the mic and walking away. And he goes, drop the mic, and then he leaves. This is a part where I'm done with Geek Evolution. Geek Evolution. <laughs> um, that voice is a totally other thing. Yeah, yeah. 
The other one just came naturally. Like, it was just what came out. Here I was trying to do a voice. Oh, no. Bruce Wayne Satellite, who they made for all of us, is now is now attacking us. Who could have foreseen this? Also, was he working on that before they brainwashed him, or did he whip that up in, like, a night? I, that's a really good question, yeah. Who is this Tusk Man? Why do you I, have to answer your own questions, Tusk Man? I don't what? know him, and it bothers me. I just want to know who he is. But if he, he has no lines of dialogue and he just like makes those noises, I guarantee you he's, he's Frank Welker. Uh, yeah, that, that's probably true. Well, and you know what? At least Batman being taken off the grid has a has a has a story point. I mean, it's real plotty, but I, but I'm, but I'm just saying like, oh, okay, he's brainwashed. That's why he's taken off the grid. Like I like I had forgotten all that. I thought he was kind of... They, they, they acted like he was dead for no reason. Yeah. At least it plays into the story there. He's telling. kind of the bad guy at the end of the movie, like, I guess. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying they had to take him out so they could do something. To they him. have to fight each other because they're girls. You think that's what we're doing here? That's, yeah, that's what we're doing here. Yeah. I think at least they're actually fighting. We're not doing the thing where like they're slapping they're, each like, other, slapping, like pulling yeah. hair. Like they're really fighting. But it kind of makes me wonder. I'm like, do we just bring that woman in so that ta somebody had to fight Talia? Like we know Nightwing's gonna fight. He's, he's gonna fight Batman. Yeah. Damien's gonna do this. Somebody's gotta fight Talia. Is it Batwoman? And if you gave them a character thing, yeah, then when you got to the end, you wouldn't be thinking that at all. This sh you would they be like, be oh, you just, in some you just way. did that because you're because you're men who want to cat fight in your movie. Like, yeah. Well, and I, and I don't mean it's not sexualized. Like it's okay. not like no, no, it's not. I just I just mean like well, I, they, they, it's the pairings. Yeah, you're saying yeah. they just they paired her up. Yeah. No, and, no, and you're right. It's 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 disingenuous to think they're thinking cat fight. That that isn't what that is. No, you're, no. you're absolutely right. But but it does seem like I well, thought that that was your point. No, but, I but, but no, I just meant I just meant well we we the girls have to fight like, I mean I guess a little bit, but it's not it's not animated like that at the very least. No, no, no. You're right. You're right. It's it's, it's definitely not a sexualized thing. It's just well, who's gonna fight the girl? Oh, I, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, it would be if this was ongoing continuity with that consequences. It's crazy out of context. It's it's just too crazy. I mean, I mean, it's also crazy that kind of that's in one of these movies. But after after if you did if you did like those 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 last time on on X Men videos for for these or for yeah that like like then you'd be like oh my god that's crazy. Um, <laughs> no no it'd be it'd be crazy if is if you did that for Batman the Animated Series and you just snuck that one in. Yeah yeah last time on Batman. It's like, I don't remember that in Batman, in Batman the Animated Series. I want to try my hand at some of those videos. The just, the just clip show, totally out of context videos. I think that's so much fun. And this is why he's here. I mean, some of my favorites of those were Shades of Nights videos. And I almost don't want to do it because Shades was so good at it. But it's been a long time. I don't think he's done those in a long time. But this is kind of dragging, isn't it? The physics there like, didn't just make sense to me. <laughs> He lost his thing upwards, but then it rolled to him. I guess it's stairs, but that seemed weird. No, this is drag. Also, this is cribbing real hard from Winter Soldier, right? Like, Oh, good call, yeah. This feels real Winter Soldier. And it's the year after, isn't it? Like, maybe they're not thinking that, but it feels Winter Soldier. It was Winter Soldier 2014. Because, like, he's Winter Soldier, the no, this year's is, last. This is two years after that, after that. yeah. So, yeah. Like, so like, they had the time, yeah, yeah. So we did Batman vs. Robin last movie, so this has to be Batman vs. Nightwing. Oh, okay. I won't. What? He says Bruce Dalton. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> all, all right. Boy, if we know it was going to be that easy, we could have finished this movie 20 minutes ago. Hey, where See, were you when Rises? He has a... Good. <laughs> Did you hear what Damien said? He shows up, he's like, this has nothing to do with the war my grandfather started. This is just about control. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. You know, it's funny, we had all that Batman with a gun talk, and I forgot he picks up a gun at the end of this. That's not why we talked about that. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh.
I guess I am glad that we have some better voiceover in this movie. Ah. You're the most generic Batman I've ever known, but... Uh, oh. Now I, that would be a twist. That would. I don't remember any of this, do you? No. I was probably so checked out by the time we got to this point, because that's what I am right now. Yeah, because I just this brainwashed Batman thing is not interesting, is it? No. And like How again, it's because it, I I haven't gotten to live in this universe and care for these characters. Well, and the 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 Batman we got in that first movie that we had to live with for an hour and a half was I I so like sorry was just so generic just 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 on un, on un, the of that word. Um... Of what word? I missed it. I was talking. She's uh, Batwoman. What, what are what are we reacting to? Batwoman said to Talia, uh, "That's what you did to my father." B word. Oh yeah, I don't that's mean not that. necessary. I mean, the use of it earlier was hilarious. Yeah, we <laughs> we're gonna make Gotham our B word. That was hilarious. See, and that and that feels more catfighty, right? Like using it that way. I don't yes. know. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Maybe there's more emotion. Like it works totally in Aliens. Like when she says it to Anne Queen, like that that works. I don't know. Doesn't work there for me. Well, it feels almost like obligatory, or there's a quota for it, or something. Yeah. Because of the sheer if a girl fights a girl, one of them has to call the other. Well, that's one. not what I mean. Just we just we have to have some obligatory use of that word in a lot of these. Or maybe I'm just complaining about the few times it's happened. Like I'm not sure. But I, I, I for whatever reason, I, I have reacted a lot of the time. We've heard that word. It's not because I'm a prude and I, I can't handle profanity. It's just it feel it's feel it's felt really forced a lot. Which is characters that don't even seem like they would use that word. Or in that context. She's such a weird pick for this movie. And it doesn't sound as hardcore as they pretend like it is. I think that's I think that's really the thing. Like that's a word you can use on television. Like mm -hmm. So we had Batman put the gun to his uh to his chin just for the sake of a real quick dramatic moment, right? Yeah. Like, it was too easy for him to immediately not do that. Like, why did we even go there? Mm. Uh, he, he at least trained on Damien for a good long time, right? Like, yeah. I don't know about that. One of them is crazy and thinks she's Alice from Wonderland. That's her, <laughs> her mom and her sister. That's weird. I don't feel like they know each other well enough for that. Yeah. We were Did talking... they even go on a date? Yeah, I'm with you. We we were talking um a lot in some other commentary or, or in, in some other commentary. I think it was I think it might have been one of these where you said they were uh cribbing in the score from uh Dark Knight Real Hard and I wasn't with you, but in this score everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um And I you know and it's like some of the pacing of certain like, you know, tense uh, like chase scenes or like uh, not chase scenes but but, but like uh, you know investigation scenes or like you know we're gonna sneak around this corner or whatever like uh, and just um, the way some of the stuff is shot you know what else makes uh, just, like not even pretending like it's not just straight up Nolan uh, Batwing feel like like he's just arbitrarily thrown in here he has no like real interactions with these characters uh -uh. with the other like that that woman feels like she's part of the story because her and Nightwing have, like, a thing. Um, yeah. He doesn't have a character dynamic with that. No, he just shows up and saves them and then flies next to the Batwing. This is kind of screaming to give her her own movie. Yeah. That's not a bad uh, Penguin design. No, it's kind of cool. No, your line is this will not take all five of us. And this is a pilot for a show we'll never make. It's 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 a it's a triple pilot. These three movies. Yeah, I'm with you. I do love that bad symbol. It's really cool. Yeah, and here's this setting up what we're never gonna. Oh pay yeah, off. I thought this was an after credit scene. I did too. Ne not gonna do anything with that because that character or that take on that character was a splash in the pan. Yeah, that it was. was a thing that was a fad. Flat, to two. Flash in the pan. Yeah. No, it's a splash in the pan. No, a flash in the pan. Is it flash? Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, she, um, 
like she was real big for like two years and then it just kind of dropped off. Was it even that? No long? one, maybe not. Maybe oh, like I forgot ADM. that was Yvonne Swarovski. Well, that's why that voice is pretty good. And there's Bachrin again. Because she's Talia. That's right. That's right. But yeah, no, no, no. That that iteration of Batgirl being really popular lasted for all of what, maybe a year, if not two. Have you heard anyone talk about was it Batgirl and the Birds of Prey uh, uh, or the Batgirl book? I I read. Is it that costume? Yeah, yeah. Um, I read the first few issues of Batgirl and the Birds of Prey. It was all right. How was that? Well, I'm sorry. You just said. It was sorry, all right. I, I'm looking for Alfred. It's James James Garnett. I mean, I didn't expect to know the voice. I'm just saying it was somebody doing that. Like, I didn't expect to know the voice. Um. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not. I'm just saying. No, I know you're not. It's know, not. It's not. That. Yeah. Like that was very clearly a fad. They would. They will not make that movie now. Right. Like maybe when they did that, they're like, everyone's talking about this. This. This version of Barbara Gordon. Maybe. Maybe, maybe just, we could do something with they that. They beat themselves really hard, and it's not just that. Like ten years from now, that's that. That's not gonna. Uh, you know, nobody's gonna care about that. It's that like next Thursday, nobody's gonna care about that. You yeah. know. Um. And it just it feels it feels really tacked on and weird. Like, okay, so like, the penguin shows up, and all five of them are gonna go after the penguin, and there's this bat girl waiting in the wings. <laughs> like, it's really random. Yeah. Like, why now? What was it about this adventure that made her finally decide to put on a suit? Like, I like like when because two new random bat people showed up. Yeah, they're like like there's nothing about that that screams, oh bat. Bat people will start coming out of the wood. Batman will just let anyone hang out with him, I guess. Me too. Yeah, is it even possible? what does it mean to anyone that's a normal... I guess it would be. I, I guess people would know about it. About, yeah. All yeah. these bat, bat, yeah. bat people, yeah. But now, now, that works if you do Incorporated. Yeah. If the movie was Incorporated and she shows up at the end, it's like, yeah, there's like these bat teams form, forming. And yeah. But like, what... Like, what does that scene play as to... Uh, to like a... A normal audience member to eighty-five percent of the people that watched this. Yeah, because most people like, like let's be honest, most people saw this movie. If not comic book fans saw this movie, got to the end was like, but we already have a Batgirl, right? Like that's I think that's going to be the reaction. That. Yeah, sure. Or they like, you know, saw the cover in the news or something, and they were like, oh yeah, that's right, that Batgirl, you know, because. Mm -hmm. Because like, like, like you said, people were all about her for five seconds. Yeah. Well, we finished them. Uh, we, we got it. we got all the fifty two Batman movies uh, finished, and so that's kind of uh, crazy too. Yeah, they've 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 opened with those. No, I know I like that a lot. Um, that's what they that's what they went to after the shadowy one that we like a lot. Mm -hmm. But that one's good too. Yeah, that one's good too. Uh, so next movie is uh, BVS, right? Um, pretty sure. Pretty sure. Let me make sure. Yeah, because Killing Joke was right after that, right? Yes. And then Return of the Cape Crusaders is yeah. right after that. Yeah. So, uh, so there we go. Uh, Batman vs Superman next time. Uh, that will be wild. BBS um, DOJ. Yeah. Yes, indeed, he do. <laughs> so Eric and I uh, are gonna do a commentary on the um, extended cut, and uh, Sarah's gonna watch it for the first time. So join us for that. And in the meantime, or join us watching that for the first time, but also the first time she'll be on the show, which is weird because uh, she did some of the Marvel ones with us. She only um, did one of them, didn't she? Did she only do Civil War? No, she was. She sat. She sat with us through a couple others. Okay. I think she was there for Ghost Rider. There were, there were, oh there were, yeah, she was there for Ghost there were a couple Rider. Others that she was there for. Yeah, where it was just a movie that she thought would be fun to sit to sit through. Yeah, she doesn't necessarily feel the need to interject much. She'll just hang out with us and watch it. But it will be fun to see her facial expressions, if nothing else. Um, I'm sure. I'm, hopefully, she'll interject. And, and any time she starts to even begin to say anything, we should just totally lay out. Yeah. Um, yeah. and let her react to that movie. But anyway, um, folks, we sure appreciate you. Thanks a lot for watching, and we will see you again. Tomorrow, I am Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. <laughs> See ya, folks. <laughs>